David is the database for annotation, visualization, and integrated discovery. It is most widely used for gene annotation enrichment analysis, which stems from gene ontology. Gene ontology is an effort to maintain and develop a controlled vocabulary of gene and gene product attributes in order to provide consistent annotations and tools for easy access and functional analysis. One application of David is to assess the function of a set of differentially expressed genes. This list of genes could come from a microarray experiment, for example. Each individual gene in the list may not be statistically significant, or the list may consist of many different genes, and you're not sure if they're related. Tools like David give some insight into whether these genes are part of a specific pathway, functionally related, or have some other unifying biological theme. As an example, let's say that you've analyzed the mutation frequencies in glioblastoma and normal brain samples in humans, and you've generated this list of 29 most frequently mutated genes. You want to know whether these genes are involved in other cancers, other diseases, or part of the same pathway. In other words, you're interested in functional annotation, which is one of the tools that David offers. First, you'll want to go to the David website. The menu on the left side shows some of the tools that David offers. We're most interested in functional annotation, so click on that. Here, you'll see some simple instructions to upload your gene list. I find that simply copy-pasting Control-V, my list of 29 genes, is the simplest. But let's say you had a lot of genes. You could also use this upload functionality to submit a file, which David will then parse. Then you need to select the identifier for your list of genes. This is just the format of the gene of the data that you're inputting. In my case, I'll select official gene symbol. But David is compatible with many types of input, which is definitely an advantage of this resource. Also, if you're not sure about the identifier, you can simply select not sure down here and David will match your input against its database to search for an identifier. It might also convert your input to its own David ID. Finally, you want to specify if the list you're submitting is gene list or background, and then you're ready to submit. After submitting, David might give you some warnings about your input. For example, here it's found that multiple species have been detected in my gene list. This is totally fine because, as we see here, all 29 genes are in Homo sapiens, which is the species that we're interested in. You can limit annotations to just this species and select the list that you've uploaded. The list manager here is useful if you ever find yourself needing to analyze multiple lists. The annotation summary results are conveniently displayed on the right. You can always check what gene list and species were used to generate this summary. As for these other attributes, David has some preset defaults, which are shown in the red. You can customize these however you wish. And when you're satisfied with the settings, you can look at three different types of output. First, the functional annotation clustering shows you different clusters that your genes fall into, ranked by enrichment score. Each cluster contains specific pathways, terms, or keywords, and you can see how many of your genes fall into that categorization and whether it is statistically significant, especially after correction for multiple hypothesis testing. It also tells you related terms for each entry. Second, the functional annotation chart shows pretty much the same information but without the clustering. This might be useful if you're not interesting in, interested in overarching biological mechanisms and functions, but instead want to look at a specific pathway for example. And as an aside, if you remember our original question and gene list, it's no surprise that most of the top hits here have to do with mutations, cancer in general, or a specific type of cancer. Finally, the function an functional annotation table looks at each submitted genes and returns the many pathways or functions that it might be involved in. One thing to note here is that since there are multiple David IDs for each gene, there may be some redundancy. In general, I find the functional annotation clustering to be the most useful output from David. But as you can hopefully appreciate from this brief tutorial, David is a relatively simple and easy to use tool that helps researchers understand the biological meaning behind a large list of genes or proteins.
Given that we're currently living in the world of big data, questions like this one are non-trivial. David is a convenient and bug-free solution, and over 21,000 citations further show that it is one of the best in the field of high-throughput functional annotation bioinformatics.